Today we're going to talk about the distributive property of multiplication. The distributive property of multiplication allows you to take arrays like this and separate them into different patterns so that we can break down more difficult problems later on. Let's take a look. So this right here is an array set up of four rows with six in each row. So we have four going down and six across. So it's a four by six. Now traditionally we would write this equation out as four times six. What the distributive property allows us to do is break this up into different groups and identify the same total number of unit cubes as uh, different multiplication problems. So instead of four times six, we're gonna organize these in a different way. Now what we've done is we've taken our four times six and we've broken it up into a different problem. We now have one group of four, four uh, rows of two each. So that's four times two four times two and over here we have four times four or four times four so now we have these two together and we still have the total number of unit cubes so what we can do is put both of these in parentheses and add them together and it should get us the same total we got as four times six so let's go ahead and take a look at that math and see if it all adds up Originally, our problem was four times six. So we're gonna put four times six equals, four times six is 24. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply each of these separately and then add them together and see what answer we get. So four times two is gonna give us eight and four times four is gonna give us 16. Add eight plus 16 and we get 24. Just like we got up here, 24 and 24. The total number of unit cubes has not changed. All we've done is reorganize them in a different way. What I have right here is two groups of 12 or two times 12. Now, for those of us that don't know our double digit multiplication problems yet, the distributive property is really gonna come in handy because these two groups of 12 are more difficult to multiply than single digits. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this 12 take each row of 12 and break that number down into something that's more manageable for me and something that's easier to multiply. So I'm gonna go ahead and split it in half. What that's gonna do is give me two separate groups of two times six. So let's do that now. So my two times 12 equals two times six plus two times six. Notice how I never changed the total number of unit cubes. So I'm gonna end up with the same answer no matter what. Two times 12 is 24, two times six is 12, plus two times six is 12, 12 plus 12 is gonna be 24 as well. Now what I want you to notice about this is take a look at the numbers that stayed the same. So my two groups stayed the same all the way through. I kept two groups the whole time. What I broke up or distributed amongst was my 12 over here. So my 12, which was across the top, was broken up into six and six. And what's really simple about this is six plus six is gonna give me that original 12. So all you have to do is pick which number you wanna distribute and then break it up into two digits that add up to that original number. Let's look at a couple of samples to try and make some sense out of that. I have three times eight right here. What I'm gonna do is decide which number I wanna distribute and which number I want to stay the same. Now my three times tables are pretty simple. So that I'm gonna keep the same. So I'm gonna underline that with green. Now the eight, that's the number that I wanna distribute into my, uh, into my problem later on. So I'm gonna underline that in black. Now when I go to write my additional two problems that will eventually add up to the product of three times eight, I'm gonna put parentheses around them. So I have two sets of parentheses and I'm gonna add these problems together. 
Now my three, I decided I'm not gonna break up. So that's gonna remain the same. So that's gonna go here and here. And it's gonna be three times and three times. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but there's some real simple rules to follow. When I'm bringing the eight over, this digit here and this digit here, both have to, have to add back up to eight to get to allow the distribution property to work properly. So I'm gonna pick five and three. Five plus three equals eight. So I put my five and my three over here, and that's how we distribute. Now the answer to this problem over here should be the same as this problem over here. Let's grab some unit cubes, check it out. So what we have here is an array of three times eight. Now, if our distribute, distributive property works properly, then we should be able to distribute this three times eight equally into a, an array for three times three and an array for three times five. And we should still be able to keep the same number of unit cubes or the same product in the end. If I count these up right now, I should have 24. One, two, three, 24. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is distribute these into two different arrays and keep my same total product. There's three rows of three over there, and now I have three times five three rows of five left over. Three times five plus three times three is gonna give me the same answer as three times eight, which is 24. That's the distributive property. I'd like to thank hashtag Jamie's desk for making this video possible. Keep watching.